Uh, this is a setup of the H2 autopilot gyro system from Flywing. First, we will go to Flywing, the official website. And once that's loaded up, we will continue. So here is the Flywing's uh, first page. And uh, we, we need to go to the download center, which is right here. you into this page where you will see the H2, H1 and FW200 software. We want H2, so we'll select that, download it, and here it is being downloaded. Once it's downloaded into your downlo download folder, you will go to H2 assistance and extract all. Once you extract it, it will extract it to a folder on your computer and you can select where you want to put it on your computer. I'll just use the default downloads assistant. And once it's extract, and once it's extracted, it's ready to go. So here it is now, it's all set. I will open the H2 Assistant. Once the, once the Assistant is opened up, you'll get this page. And it, should be, it will be in Chinese first, but you select English. And you can also select whether you want a light or a dark theme. I will use a dark theme, it's easier to, the contrast is better. Okay, next step is to connect it to the software, connect the, comp the helicopter to the software, and we will plug it in here. Plug the USB into the H2, and it starts flashing right away. And hit connect. In this case, we're using the computer as defaulted to COM port 4. You may have Comport 3 or whichever one that works. Once it says success, it's all lit up. Now if you move the helicopter left or right, you can see the compass moving, as well as if you, if you shift the helicopter. Also, attitude, you can see it shifting here also. The helicopter is connected. Okay, so today I'm using the FlySky transmitter, but you can use any transmitter, any receiver transmitter system. Uh, it will be compatible with this, as long as it has an SBUS connection. So for example, FR Sky would have an SBUS or uh, Spectrum also, depend, you'd have to have a special adapter for Spectrum. Anyway, now we're going to go into the setup. First page, you can see here it says, please turn the motor back to off. A message just came up. This is my off switch that I have selected on it. I have default, I have set down to be my off switch. Uh, converse to H1, which is up for off. Here it shows you, select the type, electric helicopter. Here is the throttle setting you can set is defaulted to 60%. We will leave that. And uh, from here now we'll go into the radio. Into the radio, here are the various uh, controls, aileron, elevator, etc. And it will show you if we should move the ailerons. There you go. Elevator, collective, and tail rotor, all working. Um, the mode switch, if you want to have used this as the mode switch for soft feel, standard feel, or sport feel, I've selected use that switch. You can use any switch on your transmitter that you so desire. This one I shall use for aerobatics, altitude, or GPS. This switch I shall use for 
return home return home off or on I have set up my switches this way that everything up is ready to go everything forward is ready to fly I have set this particular switch to be the soft mode initially to wants to get a soft takeoff and landing if you should select that switch you'll get a higher head speed it'll helicopter will be more agile this one is even more agile still that would be the sport mode the channel mapping you can change your channels here you can see each channel what each channel does so you can map to chat map your radio to those channels next is the rotor with rotor setup here we can change the swash trim you would hit 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 any of these and then you'll be able to change the swatch trim by moving these sliders up or down once you're finished you'll put it back to zero but here example for example the swatch trim i have it if i have one five seven one as a reference point i can move the swatch trim you will hit done the object of this exercise is to make sure that the swash trim is completely level so once it, the swash trim is level then we'll proceed to the next step next step is the maximum collective trim again once you hit you what do you want maximum positive or negative you'll change it there and this will change the collective pitch up and down to the maximum of 12 degrees up and 12 degrees down once that is done hit done and then it will be back to ready for flight if we hit we can test the collective now as a matter of fact you can see now that i have it reversed so i'll have to change that on one of this one of the servos you can easily reverse each servo corresponding to the swash plate so now we have the correct movement up and down 12 degrees you will use your pitch gauge and have 12 degrees set on the swash plate assembly on the right side of the page shows you some notes how to select the swash plate type the helicopter orientation the swash plate leveling and the pitch tuning all these notes will be able to you'll be able to help you to set up next page the tail rotor make sure that your tail rotor set up you'll get the get the maximum movements left and right with the tail rotor and we're using uh we're using the tail type using uh 1520 for the tail rotor we're not using electric motor if it was electric we would select that the next page is sensors and it's showing your gps if it's connected right now gps one is connected gps one is this one that's gps one this is gps one and it is flashing green which doesn't have a lock yet but it is showing that that is gps1 h2 is also flashing so it hasn't gotten a lock yet i'm indoors so once outdoors you should get a lock <clears throat> the function of the compress calibration once you hit start you'll have to do the what i call the calibration dance you'll move the helicopter in several axes up and down left right forward backwards <clears throat> and you'll see the progress here this has to be done while the computer is connected via the usb cord um, you can there's another option to do it without connecting it to the computer but here you will see the progress and there's an automatic restart there if once it's done it will restart automatically failing that you'll get a message here saying calibration successful you must restart the controller this section here refers to the distance from gps 1 and 2 to the main rotor blade 
So the distance we're talking about is from here to the to the mast correction and from here to the mast. Once you have those selected, then we'll move to the next step. If you have your low bat if you have your battery connected on to the uh, um, to the H2 controller, it will read the voltage and it will uh, shut or return to home if the battery gets slow. I have elected to turn that off as I will monitor my own battery voltage. RPM I have set for 2600 RPM. Depends on your helicopter what RPM works best for you. Parameters shows pretty much <clears throat> the various gains that you can change uh, with, with tail lock sensitivity, tail rate, 3D rate, all of those are the acro mode. Here for the GPS mode you can also uh, set up this the parameters for the stability that you need or the max speed or the altitude hold gain soft takeoff, soft landing, or coordinated turns, all of those you'll be able to, to set uh, after you've done your test flight to see how best you, the helicopter will function. Again, on the right side of the page are all of the explanations that you may need to change uh, functions. If all else fails and nothing is working right, you can also go back to factory reset and start and do the whole process over. So it's really only one, two, three, four, five, six pages. And if you just go through them in sequence, radio page, rotor page, tail rotor page, sensors, and parameters. And once that's done, then you'll be ready to do a test flight. Here we're waiting on a GPS lock. If GPS one locks is good to go, H2 we can go with it blinking. This is second GPS, there's no lights on that to tell us. So we'll just wait until at least we have GPS one before we launch. Okay, now we have a solid lock, now we're gonna start. Oh, this is in GPS mode. I'm just using normal head speed. Now I'm going to hit the return to home and see what happens. So this is return to home now. I'm going to hit it. There it is. It's going up towards the area where it took off from. And it's return and get turn land right where it took off from all hands free here all hands free I'm not doing anything Right, and that was a successful okay. test of H2 flying the T-Rex 600 
with return to home mode and that was in normal mode I did not use a sport mode yet I need to get more accustomed to it but it works very well